Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy the Feist back at it with another Raid Shadow Legends. But as always, before we get this started, if it's your first time here, definitely be sure to hit 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 that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. Come join us on Discord, follow us on Twitch, that's where we stream live, all that good stuff. If you guys know this channel, we do not have YouTube monetization, unfortunately, guys. So there is a way that you can support the channel financially, and that's through the Patreon link, which you just do sponsorship, which is a really awesome thing. But the real cool thing that I'm trying to really tell people about is we have our merchant items which is a street fighter feist shirt and a street fighter feist coffee mug guys these items look amazing so if you wanted to show support to the channel but you wanted to get something really cool definitely be sure to check out that link at the bottom we have it all in the descriptions come be part of this community let's get right into it guys because i definitely want to start this video let's do it yeah <laughs> All right, guys, so this video that I really want to talk about today is going to be a spider guide. Um, they, really, I get these uh, questions a lot uh, when we're just hanging out on stream or just talking on Discord with the entire community. And the, the question that arises is like, oh, yo, Feist, so I really want to start farming uh, spider. And then the first thing that pops up in my head is, okay, uh, before we actually start talking about farming spider where are you in your profile like where are you in the game right now are you still on normal on the campaign are you on hard are you on brutal like what's your what's your status on dragon and the reason i ask all these things guys and this is kind of the thing that i really want to emphasize that if you go to dungeons like out of all these out of all these specific ones the specific dungeons um spider den to me is the most toughest one to do just in general yeah you do get accessories out of it which it's like you kind of think to yourself like yo these are empty slots that you can fill up with items which is really cool but it like the truth of the matter is this is one of the toughest dungeons to me it's the toughest dungeon in general so when it comes to really talking about I, when you're doing spider the the first thing i want to say is let's not talk about farming spider let's first talk about doing wall checks with spiders so what i would tell you as the the first piece of advice in general and then we'll get in more in depth into the spider thing on at least a beginner's guide i'm not going to be talking about like this the spider 20 like uh, my profile is nowhere near that where it's like oh you can use three coal hearts and then you can basically like do 20 second runs i'm not talking about that strategy i'm talking about the strategy this is more for the F2P, uh, the, the free-to-play players, the, the players that are just grinding normally don't have these crazy uh, characters that, you know, they can kind of get this, uh, this theory and then just execute it based on whatever characters you have available. But what I do want to emphasize right now, guys, is when we're talking about uh, your position is what I would tell you to do before you even start thinking about Spider is first try to get through the campaign. Try to get, you know, try to get through normal, then try to get through hard, and then try to get, you know, get your first six-star farmer up. You need to have at least a six-star farmer up to get other people up before you even start thinking about spider. Uh, that's the first piece of advice I'm going to I'm gonna say right off the bat. I really do, like, if you want to do a, a wall check on spider ever so often while you're going through the campaign just to see what you can potentially accomplish, I would say do that. But don't make it an investment of draining all this energy on these low levels right now because you can be farming other things. Like once you finish the campaign, the next thing you're going to want to really start focusing on is bu building a strong Minotaur team to start getting your, your you know, th to start farming end Minotaur, which is stage 14, 15, sorry. Uh, you th That's really the priority on what you want to do. You want to basically first start doing the campaigns Start getting the, the ascensions up on your characters to get that third star to get higher skills. And then after that, start building a Minotaur team. And then, you know, you kind of do the wall checks when it comes to Spider and stuff. You really shouldn't be focusing this on heavily. And you should be kind of circulating between Spider, Dragon's Lair. And then the reason I say to focus on Dragon is because you want, you want to be able to do Clan Boss more than anything, guys. Oh, hold up. You got some items. Oh man, they killed him before I could go over. What did we got? Uh, yo, you know what? We actually could probably ascend Bellinar now that we're thinking about that. But that's a separate topic and I still got a ring and then we could start doing some more stuff. But that's, 
I'm, I just kind of looked really quick just to see what was going on. I thought it would be interesting just to see if we would have got some cool shard or something. But moving along, like the reason I say that like to focus on like Minotaur and Dragon is because Dragon, he helps you with building lifesteal sets and stuff like that. And then you could actually get pretty good gear to start, you know, getting a good clan boss team because you get a lot of rewards as you kind of saw what I did there. Like, you get really good rewards just by doing clan boss. So it's, you, this is like one of the other things you really want to focus on getting up. You know, being in a clan, doing some clan boss stuff, kind of knocking that thing down. But Spider is going to be really more later on down the road. So you should have at least a few six star characters before you start really investing in doing spider farming per se. Uh, also, the progress missions, those are the other things you're going to want to care about. But let's get right into the whole spider thing on what you should be doing as a baseline. So if we take a look at our spider, um, we're going to really take a quick look at this because I really want to do a breakdown of this, uh, this monster. Uh, they say is the monster, the spider's name is Skava, whatever. Uh, we don't care. We just want to down this mofo. So we farm generally, if you, if you just look at our time frames, we farm void in two minutes. Uh, stage 14 is cool, but you can, it takes too long to farm it. And then we always hit these walls with force. And that's that's a common thing, especially when you're starting up, guys. Because if you go to stage one, stage one is void. So it doesn't really have a counter to us. Stage two, uh, usually new users, new new people playing in general, like they're going to have ma majority magic affinity characters. So stage two will be easy to go through. Stage three, you're going to have a wall check. Unless you can do the damage to power through it, or you were lucky enough to build some spirit affinity characters, um, you might have issues here. And then stage four would be something really nice to start farming, because if you did have the magic affinity, which usually normal people do, that's what you would be, you know, not farming per se, but like, you know, you could probably do just a few runs maybe to potentially get something for one of your characters. I wouldn't, the reason I'm saying not to go so hard on farming this is because not only like it's not that these items aren't good it's that these items are faction specific which makes it draining on energy and that's the reason why i don't really emphasize on trying to do this too much you're going to get a lot of these uh items from like login rewards and things like that which is going to be cool for a bit but farming this just for a two to four star it you're going to really start draining yourself and i would rather have you use that energy elsewhere whether it's building the Minotaur team up or, you know, obviously, you know, completing the dungeons or farming to get a six star or a second six star or a third six star. Like, that's not time wasted. Uh, this could be potentially time wasted because eventually when you do get the six star characters, you could probably steamroll through these sections. So don't try to spend too much time on that. But going ever so often, doing a wall check, seeing where you're at, it's a really good thing. So it's usually like go to stage four then kind of maybe you might hit uh you know you might hit a wall eventually later on again on like stage seven and then you're at stage eight you could do a few on those nothing crazy and then eventually you'll be like me where a lot of people will probably be farming stage 12 because the magic affinity but because of our build and we'll go through it right now void actually isn't too shabby guys now what are the type of characters are you gonna want to have as a as a beginning player when it comes to trying to build a spider team essentially when you're building a spider team the type of people you're gonna want is aoe heavy characters because you want to take down the the spiderlings asap so if you look at our team really quick and I actually did a recent video on Bellinar, guys. So if you have not checked in, checked that video out of him farming with not even great gear, it's a really awesome video. Definitely be sure to check it out. But if we just look at his assessment really quick, all his moves, guys, are attack all enemies. And he also puts debuffs, which is really awesome. Like, the fact that he does decrease speed, uh, decrease attack, decrease defense, like, on everything pretty sick character to have for uh for spider so i definitely do love him we do have him built as a farmer though so i will tell you right off the bat we do not have him decked out for accuracy we have him decked out for pure damage so it's one of those things where i basically gave him a, a specialist job which is to farm and uh and eventually you know he can help with a spider even with his current state he actually can farm he actually got grind with us pretty well now 
Uh, Apoth isn't bad because he kind of boosts everyone up. This is not an efficient team, guy. guys. I will tell you this right now because my team is actually uh, a, a multi-purpose team. Like, I'm using Skartorsis for everything. I'm using Kale for everything, and I'm using Jerang for everything. So we still have not built a specialist team. But if Skartorsis was built for Spider and he was pure damage versus ours being more pure support, pure defense to absorb damage for people because I use him in Arena and stuff... Um, he actually, uh, he would, uh, he would be pretty monstrous because his main attack does straight up a lot of hits. Uh, he hits everything. So if you build Skartorsis, because his A1, if we look at it really quick, he has attacks all enemies, has a 30% chance of stealing one random buff from each enemy. Enemy. Uh, it's really good that he has that attack. Now, Jerang isn't great for Spider. I will tell you that hands down right now, guys. He is someone that I'm going to be replacing. To be honest, the character that we are going to be replacing Jerang with, even though he does attack down, defense down, but it's three random hits, three random enemies. If there's a lot of spiderlings, he's not going to connect that. But we do not have the character up yet, and I think it's in Demon Spawn. It's Baroness that we're going to uh, build up. Baroness is going to be pretty awesome. We're going to really enjoy having her because she basically does a similar thing she just has this one perfect veil thing which isn't a bad move uh but the fact that her a1 and a2 does attack all enemies and one of them actually heals uh, for five percent of the damage inflicted so if there's a lot of spiderlings she doesn't even really need to do too much lifesteal or whatever because she her a1 already kind of handles it but it would be nice to have that and she also does decrease a, uh attack debuff on all enemies for two turns so this is going to be the character that we're going to be focusing on next to build. So if you kind of see the strategy of what we're going for, specifically with our team, and I'm just going to show you how my team currently runs, even though it's not efficient, it still gets the job done. Uh, it's, it's building, like, have at least, like, three people that do attack all enemy attacks. Um, if we look at Kale really quick, because obviously, you know, he's the starter champion, a lot of people would have him. He does have only one really AoE attack, but if he kills the Spiderlings, he gets an extra turn, which reduces the cooldown for him. And if you spec, obviously, into the offensive tree, you're going to want to have that 30% decrease, decrease cooldown. Acid Rain can basically appear twice, so it's like you could do it this, kill all the Spiderlings, you're going to get an extra turn. Either he's going to use Disintegrate or Dark Vault. Regardless, that reduces this specific cooldown by one again. And then if you have a decrease cooldown, he already has it up again. So it's, it's kind of like one of those really cool things, guys, where uh, Acid Rain can be popping up very frequent. So Kale is, as a starter champion, pretty, uh, pretty good. There's other characters, there's other starter champions that have two AoE attacks, which is really awesome as well. So I would also recommend, you know, if you did have those characters, definitely be sure to use them. But like you see, Bellor, uh you know, Skartorsis is an AoE person, not a lot of damage with our spec, unfortunately, but we have Kale, we're going to replace Jerang with Baroness, and we have Apoth for the speed, which isn't bad. So, you're going to see it right now. Let's get into it so you guys can see what I'm talking about. It's not, it's not a bad team, we just need more AoE damage, specifically when you're starting as a, a person who's farming Spider, that's really the type of build you're going to want to go for. You're not going to want to go for those crazy... Cold Heart builds where you need a lot of crit damage. That's just not feasible when you're starting out in the game. You have there's there's a there's a different meta for everyone that plays as time progresses because then you have these characters and champions and heroes available to you to actually spec with those gear items because you need to build them a certain way. Um, there's also certain ways that you should build your character if you're making them more. You see how Bellower with his crazy attack damage, he was able to just kill all those spiderlings. Really awesome. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the accuracy for us because he is our farmer. Uh, it may get to the point where we might have another character that we eventually can replace to have Bellower have some accuracy, which I'm definitely looking forward to. We should really pause this really quick. Uh, wait. How do you... Oh, continue. Uh, how about... Let's stop. Let's... <laughs> He's actually ending really quick. We're already 54 seconds in. It's but what I really want to do really quick is I want us to discuss some of these uh, skills that he has because there there is misconceptions of Spiderling can heal. Can you do healing reduction? Obviously, you cannot apply healing reduction on uh, on the boss because it does not help in any way. Because if we look at their passives, 
we already see healing assured level one immune to heal reduction debuffs so any champion that does heal reduction it does not help in any form or fashion guys please keep that in mind when you're building a spider team this does not so don't don't think about having someone that does heal reduction that is a no-no they don't benefit but if they have another skill that kind of helps where like you know they do insane damage they do aoe attacks aoe aoe attacks or something like that that's not a bad thing to do um if we go to spiderling hordes let's take a look at them spawns six spiderlings at the start of the round spawns two spiderlings at the start of each champion's turn so right off the bat when he starts uh he gets six spiderlings and then every time you guys go we he gets he gives two so then spawns four spiderlings at the end of Skavig, Skavig's tur turn. And then Skavig can have a maximum of 10 spiderlings in battle at any time. Skavig consumes all remaining spiders at the start of each turn. If Skavig consumes spiderlings, she will not consume them on the following turn. Ska uh, Skavig heals by 3% of her max HP for each spiderling consumed and permanently increases her attack by 10% for each spiderling consumed. So this is kind of like a enrage boss timer kind of thing in a sense if uh if she consumes too many spiders so essentially it, it's kind of like world of warcraft where it's like a gear check if you don't down this uh character after a certain amount of turns she's just gonna basically overpower you and destroy you uh it's funny that i'm just saying like it's a she well i mean i assume that the spider is a she because she has spiderlings uh, children so <laughs> but i could be wrong who the hell knows I mean, there's seahorses that are male that get pregnant, so, I mean, imagine I said that and that's not true. I'm pretty sure that's true. I don't know. You guys correct me in the comments, bruh, or you might have learned something new. Who knows? Uh, but let's continue. Heals from lifesteal, artifacts, and skills that are heal-based on damage inflicted will only heal champions by 35% of the stated amount when attacking Skavig on her spiderlings. Now, here's the thing. Even though they did, uh, they they nerfed lifesteal artifacts and like Baroness's heal, uh, it still does decent amount of healing with the lifesteal set because you're killing so many things on the screen. So regardless of them doing that, if you're hitting a bunch of spiderlings, not that big of a deal. It's that so even though they say that, not that much. So that says damage is based on enemy max HP. That is very interesting. So, uh, this is just me riffing. I have not built this, but it makes me kind of think about if the enemy max HP sets where the, the, the set where you reduce the enemy's HP on the damage dealt, I'm wondering if this is really beneficial to kind of start nerfing, uh, the person's damage, if you know what I mean. I definitely want to eventually do some testing on this guys, but I see that and it makes me think about it. So since I'm doing a spider video, why not have this theory craft discussion it's not that big of a deal right now, but I'm kind of discussing the strategy that we have. So we we basically discussed this long thing where she gets healed by an amount of spiderlings and each spiderling gives 10% increased damage. But if you start reducing her enemy, her max HP, then it might not be as brutal. So then let's look at Enfeeble. Enfeeble level 1 attacks all enemies and has 70% chance of decreasing the turn meter by 30% if a target turn meter is fully depleted places a sleep debuff for one turn so this is basically like her her dropping meter or basically put them to sleep if they their turn meter drops to zero so that's that's one of those moves that she has and then venom spray attacks all enemies damage increases by 15 percent if the target has poison debuffs so resist would be really nice to have as well in this type of fight but it's not something that we're really pressing for in this case scar torses for us basically he uh he removes uh, debuffs from us so it's a really good thing so if you have a cleanser you might not need to worry about this too much guys uh, so that's a cool thing that you want to keep mind of I'm really intrigued about the enemy max HP now because if you kind of did it and I'm just like thinking about the crazy stuff if you did like cold heart but then you built that set and then it was based on the damage that like say say they survived uh, based on the heart seeker how is that going to work out with them doing damage afterwards? But then if you're able to down someone with cold heart with that much damage, maybe you won't even care about it because you do 20 second runs. But I'm curious about the enemy max HP and doing that type of set. So let's continue, guys. As you can see, we had Bellower, Skartorsis. We had Kale. If Skartorsis did more damage output, he would be helping so much more with the um, Spiderlings. But unfortunately, he doesn't help as much. 
but it is what it is. It, we're still able to handle it. So we were at 54 seconds handling uh, all this good stuff, which is very interesting. And then basically, if we added another six seconds, we would have been done with that. Uh, we got, but that's essentially the type of build that you go for, especially in the beginning. Durang is gonna be replaced soon. Uh, if I did want to do some crazy cold heart build, guys. I do have Belinor, which Belinor is pretty amazing, and I would probably replace uh, Skartorsis in that case as the lead, because uh, Belinor gives that crit. I think it's like, we'll take a look at it, but I think it's 24% crit uh, that he gives as lead, which means that's 24% that the team is not going to need to worry about, and then after that, when he hits the target, he also gives a 30% crit buff. So it's one of those things where, where you know, you can basically do, uh, you know, 50 to 60% crit just based on passives and buffs and, and stuff, which is just really insane. And then you could just focus heavily on crit damage. But the thing is, if I would use Belinor, the first thing I would try to use would, or Belinor would try to use on auto would be uh, the one where he applies the defense down 60% and the weaken. So we I want to sum it up really quick. When you're trying to find out when you should farm spider, you should really be checking where you are on the campaign. Did you do normal? Did you do hard? Did you do brutal? Did you have a do you have a six star farmer already? Do you have a second six star? Uh, after you have a second second to third six star, you can start doing wall checks on spider to see how far you can go to probably get some items but not farm crazy. Uh, then what I would tell you the next thing you need to do is really focus on minotaur runs and doing dragon. Dragon is going to give you a lot of life steal. And then also trying to kind of just do clan boss on a daily basis to kind of really focus on getting that up. But by getting uh, your Minotaur up with all those skill sets, you can do a lot of cool things. I'm going to do a more advanced tutorial later down the road, the more uh, progress we get on Spider itself. But as you saw, we were farming. Why am I going to Fire Knight? Uh, I, we should probably do a guide on that in the future. But... If we go to uh, how far we were, we, we were farming stage, oh, we did stage 9, my bad guys, my bad, let's do stage 13, why am I doing that right now, wait, was that, yeah, we did stage 9, let's do stage 13, I want to show you that real quick, that was so bad. Alright, so we're going to do stage 13, that was so bad that I kind of ran that twice. Uh, it, it was just such a long-winded discussion there that, you know, it didn't hurt to actually do it. But, doing stage 13, this, I was wondering why it did, like, uh, basically a one-minute run. I'm like, yo, that's way too quick for us. But, having that AoE attack really does help, guys, when you're doing that. Jerang, you see, even the Jerang did attack down for, uh, for the Spiderling boss. That's not what I care about. I care about, really, defense down when it comes to this. And Bellower, if he had the accuracy, he would actually be helping with that. But he's just doing pure damage right now. It's kind of crazy. So let's see how long this is going to take us. It'll probably take us around the two-minute marker. But Jerang is the one uh, the one person that's ha uh, hindering us right now. With Baroness, it would really take it to the next level just because of the damage output uh, that Baroness would do. And taking all those Spiderlings out, not to worry about them healing or the boss healing is a really good thing. So right now, Bellower is asleep, which uh, we're gonna we're gonna miss a turn on that. But that's why that's the cool thing of if you had multiple characters that did AOE attacks, basically they would pick up the slack if that came down to it where it was that type of thing. But yeah, it's it's kind of one of those things I was I, I always get those questions and then um and usually the retort is but I have an empty ring or neck piece or banner and I'm like I totally get it. I, I, I had empty banners for a very long time on my characters, guys, before I actually started farming spider to the point where I got something that was beneficial for them. Because it's like, it's just a grind for them. It's like, okay, well, first, you have to get it on the same faction. Then, you have to get the item that you want for your champion. So, like, the chances of doing that, like, how many factions are out there right now? It's like 4, 8, 12... Is it 15, 16? I, I don't know. But like, let's just say I, I would have to count them to be correct. But it's like one out of 12 chances you're gonna get the proper faction, right? And then after that, 
it's, you know, X amount of chances that you're going to get the right uh, main stat and then potentially the sub stat. So it's like a very low probability and it's going to be a long grind. So it's not worth it to do it really early game. Focus on finishing the campaign, getting that six star farmer, getting that, you know, getting a few six stars up there. Focus on building a Minotaur team so you can really start getting those scrolls. So you can go crazy that you have four people that can bring anybody up with those uh, with those scrolls up in like a matter of a couple of hours uh, just by farming stage 15 quickly. Yo, know, focus on Dragon. Those are kind of like the real thing. Get, get the characters ascended to at least three star minimum to get those skills up. All that good stuff. Like That's really the important part of... Uh, of really doing when you should do spider and when you shouldn't do spider i can't believe i did that earlier i'm still gonna upload this i'm gonna upload this as raw because it was still it was still good conversation at the end of the day i'm not gonna edit that uh but i did want to show this part over here Yo, that was a nice hit from Bellinor, Bell, Bellinor, uh, bellor i have too many six star b characters at this point that i just keep uh mixing up the damn names but if i did yo if i had three cold hearts or if i had three characters that did damage based on max uh enemy hp uh, and they were decked out yeah i'd probably put bellinor at the top i'd probably make his i would change his skill set to probably be increased crazy speed so he could be the first one to go there to put the weaken and the defense 60 percent down and then they would just go ham uh the following people to attack i think that's the that's the way that i would probably go with if i would start building a composition because i definitely would want to use bellinor for that but the thing is I don't want to use Bellinor as a spider specific character right now. Right now he is actually working, he's actually putting in work for us on um, on Clan Boss, which I think is really good. So that's like one of those things. So we're almost there at the end, four minutes. I mean, yeah, it's so RNG how it can go with this one. I think I actually might be able to go faster with Bellinor, potentially. Potentially, I'm not too sure yet. I'm wondering if I should try that. Should I do? Should I do one one uh, one run with Bellinar? Uh, basically, he's not. He obviously is single target damage. He does not help with the AOE, so it's a counter argument to uh, to this run. So let's see. All right, so our run was four minutes and 36 seconds. What I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna take Bellinar out. He's not even full uh, full 60 yet, but he was 50 when... So I, I'm curious on how fast it can go if he specifically focuses on Spider. This is going to be very interesting. And the other thing is, guys, if you ever did that crazy stage 20 cold heart, uh, you know, that heart seeker damage attack, like the thing that you're gonna want to build crazy for is crit damage. So when you go to the last tier of mastery, you're not gonna want to go for giant slayer or anything like that. You're gonna want to go for the 20% crit. So that's the important thing uh, when it comes to doing that. So let's see. I want to see how much, like how much damage output does Bellinor speed this up to the point that, or he maybe he doesn't speed it up. Maybe yo, know, maybe this might be a wipe. I don't know. But I used to do it with Bellinor at five stars so why wouldn't i be able to do a bellinor when he's close to six star that's a good question or maybe it's like i farmed maybe i farmed spirit and then that's why it was okay we'll, we'll see we'll see how this turns out Finn. i'm hoping that bellinor puts so much damage out all right so he got that heal off so you could see right off the bat guys that that aoe heal um really or that heal from the spiderlings really helps because we don't have that aoe damage so it kind of puts us in a weird spot but so far it's one minute in we're almost at the 50 percent mark there's there's potential i look at that so he did a, like 100k damage on his own because he has uh, the giant slayer minute and 30 just it's it's kind of interesting it's like me now like I, I like i never really did any benchmarking on it per se but i'm kind of curious at this point Espe especially when it comes to like doing this stage but he applied the weekend he yeah he did almost 100k damage just there as single target so that's pretty awesome now can kill uh essentially clean this up no he's not able to clean it up just yet so they might get some spider hits on this 
but we are about to hit a two minute marker. The spiders are attacking now because we don't have the AOE to clean them up. He won't die to that, but let's see. There's that, yep, look at that. So it's actually much more faster with our Bellinar right now, which is so interesting. I do like that. So very interesting counter argument in this case with that. So it, it starts getting to the point where it's like, you know, if you start doing crazy single target damage, but we're not, we're nowhere near that guys. Uh, it's definitely not so, like for now, I'd probably stay with this type of team just for an efficiency purposes. But like when it comes to like building the team in general, like it's, it's a normal rule of thumb to kind of build AOE, especially like in the sense where it's like you're more safe you're much more safer because you're killing the spiderlings they're not getting that turn they're not putting the poison in and, but it is a much slower grind currently with that state but we're we're slowly building our bellor bellinar up to the point where he's doing this crazy single target damage which is really good and if we had some other people really helping with that enemy max hp damage how sick would that be that would be so crazy but I think I'm going to end the video there, guys. You kind of saw, you know, just different strategies, different discussions. So sorry for putting that early uh, grind of like, whatever, stage nine. I was, I don't know. I was kind of just, I just brain farted there. But yo, guys, if it's your first time here, definitely be sure to hit, 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 hit that subscribe button. Leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. I love hearing from you guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. Yo, again, if you wanted to financially support the channel, Definitely be sure to check out that Street Fighter Feist Merchant gear. I'm going to, it's absolutely amazing how it looks, guys. So if you wanted to get something back but give something versus just doing a donation, this would really mean the world to me. I love you guys so much. I love spending time with you guys. Come join us on Discord, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace. See you guys. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys tons, and I'll catch you guys later. <laughs> I'll be sure to do a more advanced video the further we get down because I know uh, get down. I say get down, get down. No, so the further we get down the, the chain, guys, the, the more advanced our skills become, the much stronger our, our champions become. I'll do more videos because I know you you guys love seeing the progress because then later down the road, you're going to be like, yo, I remember when Feist was doing goddamn stage 13 and, and now he's doing this. So I definitely do love doing that, guys, because when you guys start seeing that, especially on stream, it's like a, it's a pretty cool thing. But yo, guys, I'll catch you guys le later. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I love hearing from you guys. Let me know what your spider team is and all that good stuff, guys. I definitely love hearing the different things, and I love reading your comments. You guys make my day, and I'll catch you guys later. See ya. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time here and you're watching from YouTube, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you ever come to Twitch, definitely be sure to hit that follow button. Come join us on Discord. The link is below in the YouTube description. Also, last but not least, I want to say major, major, major shout outs to the sponsors. If you guys also wanted to financially support the stream, definitely be sure to check out that YouTube description below. There is a Patreon link. And if you can't support financially, don't worry, guys. There's other ways you can actually show support. That's getting the word out, sharing the content, letting friends and loved ones know about this uh this channel tell them to come and hang out come join us on discord you will not regret it it's the best community slash family ever it says it right there on the freaking board yo thank you guys so much for hanging out i love you guys so much and i will catch you guys next time let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next what you think about the video and so on i'll catch you guys next time see ya